Down the ages past, Allah sent his messengers to deliver humankind from darkness to light. That's also the ongoing mission of Islamic Research Foundation or IRF, spreading the truth of Allah's final message to mankind. Founded in 1991, IRF today offers some of the best services and facilities in the world for presenting an understanding of Islam in an objective and scientific way. Its programs are primarily focused on correcting misconceptions and promoting understanding of Islam. IRF also imparts Dawa training to Dais to aptly convey the message of Islam. Dr. Zakir Naik, President of IRF, reaching out across countries worldwide, from America to Europe to Africa to Asia to Australia, strives to clarify Islamic viewpoints. He dispels the many media myths and anti-Islamic prejudices propagated the world over by anti-Islamic forces. IRF today is creating a change in the hearts and minds of millions of Muslims and non-Muslims worldwide towards a proper understanding and respect for Islam. Have a question or doubt about Islam and its teachings? Now you know, one of the best resource centers to get convincing answers from is Islamic Research Foundation, Mumbai, India. For more information, log on to our website www.irf.net. Muhammad is and always will be the last and final prophet of Allah. He was a mercy unto the universe. Peace and blessings be on Allah. Brothers and sisters, I am Manzoor Sheikh, the host for today's program. We begin our program with the recitation of Holy Quran, Zikra Naik will recite before you Surah Ala, Zikra Naik. Ayyuhal Mustamiyoon al-Kiram, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Ismi Zikra Naik. Wal-an, uqaddimu amamakum tilawat al-Quran al-Kareem min Surah Al-Ala. أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم سبح اسم ربك الأعلى الذي خلق فسوى والذي قدر فهدى والذي أخرج المرعى فجعله ثاء أحوى سنقرئك فلا تنسى إلا ما شاء ونيسرك لليسرى فذكر إن نفعت الذكرى سيذكر من يخشى ويتجنبها الأشقى الذي يصل النار الكبرى ثم لا يموت فيها ولا يحيا قد أفلح من تزكى 
وزكر اسم ربه فصلى بل تؤسرون الحياة الدنيا والآخرة خير وأبقى إن هذا لفي الصحف الأولى صحف إبراهيم وموسى صدق الله العلي العظيم جزاك الله ذكر نائك Now I call upon Rushda Naik. She will do the Qirat of Surah Duha. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Hawuzu billahi min ash-shaytan ar-rajim. Bismillahi ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Wadduha. والليل إذا سجى ما ودعك ربك وما قلى ولا الآخرة خير لك من الأولى ولا سوف يعطيك ربك فترضى ألم يجدك يتيما فآوى ووجدك ضالا فهدى ووجدك عائلا فأغنى فأما اليتيم فلا تقهر وأما السائل فلا تنهر وَأَمَّا بِنِعْمَةِ رَبِّكَ فَحَدِّثْ صَدَقَ اللَّهُ الْعَزِيمِ This was Rushda Nayak, Alhamdulillah. Now, I call upon Farikh Nayak. He will present Islamic song, M-U-S-L-I-M. One billion strong all year long Pray to Allah even in Hong Kong Can never be wrong if you read the Quran God has never been chased since day one Other be brag, say that we lack But they don't know all the power we have The power we have, the power we have So Muslim, oh, don't you ever be sad Take many looks, go read their books You'll see all the facts that our friends overlook So always be proud, you can say it out loud I'm proud to be down with the Muslim crowd M-U-S-L-I-M I'm so blessed to be with them M-U-S-L-I-M I'm so blessed to be with them Don't know about you, I know about me I'm proud to come rolling Islamically Everywhere I see, even on TV People talking trash about the way I be But what they all hate is if you get great Cause you are the one with your heads on straight Don't ever frown with your head looking down If you read the Quran, you're the best in the town You all have doubts, say we have no clout But within a few years, see how we've come about Come back to the scene, the number one dean I'm proud to be down with the Muslimin M-U-S-L-I-M I'm so blessed to be with them M-U-S-L-I-M I'm so blessed to be with them Jazakallah, Farif Now we have Rushda Naik delivering a song, Islamic song, I Believe in Allah. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. I stand in line and pray, and zakah I pay, I fast in Ramadan, cause I believe in Allah. I'm nice to my fellow men, I'm kind to my parents, my elders I respect, cause I believe in Allah. Watching over me, all things Allah can see. I want to be sure he's happy with my deeds. He answers me in prayer. When I call, he's always there. He helps me through the day. Yes, I believe in Allah. I love to hear the Adhan. I love my Deen Islam. I hope to go to Makkah. 
Cause I believe in Allah, I believe, I believe. I believe in Allah, I believe, I believe. Yes, I believe in Allah. Now, Rushda Nayak will deliver a Islamic song. Talk to me about Muhammad, peace be upon him. I request the audience, especially for this song, please carefully pay attention to each and every word of this song. It will, inshallah, touch the strings of your heart. It would be such a pleasure to have you come along with me. I accept your gracious offer of kindness and company. But as we walk along, young man, and as you help me with the load, I have only one request. As we travel down this road, don't talk to me about Muhammad. Because of him there is no peace and I have trouble in my mind. So don't talk to me about Muhammad. And as we walk along together, we will get along just fine. I have only one request. As we travel down this road, don't talk to me about Muhammad. That man upsets me so, so much more than you could know. I hear of his name and reputation everywhere I go. Though his family and his clan once knew him as an honest man, he's dividing everyone with his claim that God is one. So don't talk to me about Muhammad. And as we walk along together, we will get along just fine. I have only one request. As we travel down this road, don't talk to me about Muhammad. Thank you now, young man. You've been so really kind. Your generosity and smile are very rare to find. Let me give you some advice, since you've been so very nice. From Muhammad, stay away. Don't heed his words or emulate his way. And don't talk to me about Muhammad. You will never have true peace and trouble is all you'll find. So don't talk to me about Muhammad. Now before we part and go, if it's all right just the same, may I ask you, my dear young man, who are you? What's your name? Forgive me, what was that? Your words weren't very clear. My ears are getting old. Sometimes it's difficult to hear. It's truly rather funny, though I'm sure I must be wrong. But I thought I heard you say, your name is Muhammad. Muhammad. Ashadu Allah. Ilaha illallah wa shadu anna Muhammad Rasulullah. Mm-hmm. Talk to me, Muhammad. Upon you I pray for peace, for you have eased my troubled mind. Mm-hmm. Talk to me, Muhammad. And as we walk along this road, we will get along just fine. As I travel down this road, I will get along. Just fine. Jazakallah, Rushda, for a very impressive song indeed. Now, I call upon Sayyid Shah Hussain Qadri to deliver the welcome note. Nahmaduhu wa nusalli ala rasulihi al-kareem. Amma baad, I, Sayyid Shah Hussain Qadri, welcome all of you with the Islamic greetings. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuhu. It's an honor and privilege for me to welcome a world famous orator on universal brotherhood and comparative religion, Dr. Zakir Nayak. <laughs> Chairperson, Manzoor Sheikh. I also welcome the staff and crew of IRF Islamic Research Foundation, Bombay. I'm gratified by the presence of such a huge and enthusiastic crowd waiting patiently to know about the presence of Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam in world religious scriptures. I pray to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that all doubts prevailing in your mind regarding the topic 
are cleared. Thank you. Jazakallah khair. Brothers and sisters, the presence of all of you in several thousands here is definitely an indication to me that you are all very eager to listen to Dr. Zakir. And therefore, I shall not take much of your time in introducing the esteemed speaker to you. I will only take a few words to tell you about him. Dr. Zakir, basically a medical doctor by profession, turned around completely and came out to serve the cause of Allah. His activities for the past two decades have brought a revolution in the field of Dawa. And to project the correct picture of Islam in its right perspective, Dr. Zakir has traveled to several countries in the world, mainly USA, UK, Canada, and many other countries of Europe. His zeal to project the Islam in its right perspective has brought laurels for him and cleared the misconception about Islam to many people. He resorted to creating a new field for Dawa by studying comparative religion. And he studied many books on Islam and comparative religion. He calls himself, most humbly, as the student of Islam and comparative religion. He has also traveled to several cities in this country to deliver his talk and has been in the forefront of the Dawa activities. I take upon this unique opportunity to request him to deliver his talk on the topic, Muhammad, peace be upon him, in the various world religious scriptures. Alhamdulillah. Wassalatu wassalam. Al Rasulillah wa ala ali wa sabi ajmain. Amma bad. Aouzu billahi min shaitani rajim. Bismillah ar Rahman rahim. Ma kana Muhammadun aba ahadim mirjalikum. Wala ki Rasulullah. Wa khatim nabiin. Wa kana Allah bi kulli shayin alima. Rabbi shahli sadri. Wa yisli amri. Wa halul ugda tamil lisani yafkahu kauli. My respected elders and my dear brothers and sisters, I welcome all of you with the Islamic greetings. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuhu. May peace, mercy, and blessings of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, of Almighty God, be on all of you. The topic of this evening's talk is Muhammad. Peace be upon him in the various world religious scriptures. Many people have a misconception that Islam is a new religion which came into existence 1400 years ago. And Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, is the founder of this religion. In fact, Islam is there since time immemorial, since man set foot on this earth. And Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, is not the founder of this religion, but he is the last and final messenger of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, of Almighty God, which was sent for the whole of humankind. The glorious Quran says in Surah Fatir, chapter number 35, verse number 24, there is not a nation to whom we have not sent a warner. Allah says in Surah Rod, chapter number 13, verse number 7, and to every nation have we sent a guide. By name, there are 25 prophets of Almighty God mentioned in the Quran. For example, Adam, Noah, Abraham, Moses, Jesus, Muhammad, peace be upon them all. There are no less than 25 prophets mentioned in the glorious Quran by name. But Allah also says in the Quran, in Surah Nisa, chapter number 4, verse number 164, 
and Surah Ghafir, chapter number 40, verse number 78, we narrate to you the stories of some of the messengers or some of the prophets. Of the others, we don't. That means all the prophets have not been mentioned by name in the glorious Quran. And our beloved Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi said, it's a Sahih Hadith, which is mentioned in Mishkad al-Masabi, volume number three, Hadith number 5737. Our beloved Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi said that Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala has sent about 124,000 prophets on the face of the earth. But by name, only 25 are mentioned in the Quran. But all the messengers that came before the last and final messenger prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, they were only sent for their people. And the complete message which they brought was only meant to be followed in totality till a particular time period. All the messengers that came before prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, they were only meant for a particular group of people. For example, Isa alayhi salam, Jesus Christ, peace be upon him, was only sent for the Jews, for the Bani Israel. Allah says in the Quran, in Surah Al-Imran, chapter number 3, verse number 49, that Jesus Christ, peace be upon him, was sent as a messenger to the Bani Israel, to the children of Israel. The same message is repeated in Surah Saf, chapter number 61, verse number 6. Jesus Christ, peace be upon him, says to the Bani Israel, I've been sent as a messenger to you. And the same message is even repeated in the Bible. It's mentioned in the Bible, in the Gospel of Matthew, chapter number 10, verse number 5 and 6. Jesus Christ, peace be upon him, says, he tells to his apostles that, go ye not into the way of the Gentiles. Who are the Gentiles? The non-Jews, the Hindus, the Muslims. Go ye not into the way of the Gentiles. Enter ye not into the city of the Samaritans, but rather go to the lost ship of the house of Israel. The same message repeated in the Gospel of Matthew, chapter number 15, verse number 24, where Jesus Christ, peace be upon him, himself says, that I have not been sent but to the lost ship of the house of Israel. That means, according to the Quran and the Bible, Jesus Christ, peace be upon him, was only sent for the Bani Israel, only for the Jews, for the children of Israel. But Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, was the last and final messenger. I started my talk by quoting a verse from the glorious Quran, from Surah Azab, chapter number 33, verse number 40, which says, Ma kana Muhammadun aba ahadim mirijalikum, wa la Rasulullah, wa khatam in nabin, wa kana Allahu bi kulli shayin alima. Muhammad, peace be upon him, is not the father of any of you men, but he is the messenger of Allah, and he is the seal of the prophets. Allah is all-knowing, full of knowledge. Because Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, was the last and final messenger of Almighty God, he was not sent only for the Muslims, or only for the Arabs. Allah says in the Quran, in Surah Ambiya, chapter number 21, verse number 107. وَمَا أَرْسَلْنَاكَ إِلَّا رَحْمَةً لِلْعَالَمِينَ We have sent thee not, but as a mercy to all the worlds, as a mercy to all the creatures, as a mercy to the whole of humanity. Allah repeats the message in Surah Sabah, chapter number 34, verse number 28. وَمَا أَرْسَلْنَاكَ إِلَّا قَفَّةً لِلْنَّاسِ بَشِيرًا وَنَذِيرًا We have sent thee not, but as a universal messenger giving glad tidings and warning them against sin. But most of the human beings yet do not know. Because Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, was the last and final messenger, and no other messenger, no other prophet is going to come after him, that's the reason he was not sent only for the Muslims or for the Arabs, he was sent for the whole of humankind. We Muslims, because we believe that the glorious Quran is the word of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, is the last and final revelation of Almighty God. Whatever the Quran says, we believe. That's why we also believe that Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, is the last and final messenger, and we also believe that he was sent for the whole of humankind. But most of the non-Muslims, the non-Muslims in general, they do not believe that the Quran is the word of God. That's the reason they may not agree 
that Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, is the last and final messenger of God and was sent for the whole of humanity. That's the reason to convince the non-Muslims. I'm taking the help and guidance of one of the verses of the Quran, which I consider as the master key for Dawah, for conveying the message to the non-Muslims. Allah says in Surah Al-Imran, chapter number three, verse number 64, Come to common terms as between us and you. When we are speaking with different types of people, the best way is, as the Quran says, come to common terms as between us and you. So let us analyze what do the various religious world scriptures have to speak about Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him. So the non-Muslims if they believe in these scriptures, which they follow, if it's mentioned in these scriptures, if they consider it to be the word of God, then they have to even believe in the message of these scriptures. Let us first discuss Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, in the Hindu scriptures. The Hindu scriptures can be broadly divided into two categories the Shrutis and the Smritis. Shruti means that which is revealed, which is understood, which is heard. The Shruti, according to the Hindu scholars, is considered to be the word of God. And they are divided into two parts, the Ved and the Upanishads. The Sanskrit word Ved is derived from the word vid, which means knowledge par excellence. And there are four types of Vedas. Rig Ved, Yajur Ved, Sam Ved, and Atharva Ved. Though exactly when did these Vedas come into existence is not known. But according to Swami Dayanand Saraswati, who's the founder of the Arya Samaj, he says that the Vedas are 1,310 million years old. But the majority of the Hindu scholars, they say that the Vedas are approximately 4,000 years old. In which part of the world did it first come is not known. Who was the person to whom it was first given is not known. In spite of all these ambiguities, it is yet considered to be the word of God, and it is the most authentic and the most high scriptures amongst all the Hindu scriptures. The next in authority are the Upanishads, derived from the Sanskrit word upa, which means near, ni matlab down, shad matlab sit, sitting down near. When the pupils and students sat next to the teacher to acquire knowledge, it's called Upanishad, which means knowledge, which removes ignorance. There are more than 200 Upanishads, but the Indian culture gives a figure of 108, out of which some are picked up as the principal Upanishads. Some have picked up 10, some 12. Shirada Krishna has picked up 18 and written a book, the principal Upanishads. The next type of scriptures are the Smritis. Smriti means that which is remembered. It means memory. The Hindu scholars say Smritis are scriptures written by human beings, by rishis. And they are next after the Shruti. The Shrutis are higher than the Smritis. They're also called as Dharma Shastra because they tell how a life should be led by an individual, by the community, and by the society. One of the most important Smriti is the Purana. Purana means ancient. It talks about the stories of deities, about the creation of the universe, about literature. And Maharishi Vyas has compiled the Puranas into 18 voluminous parts. One of the most important Puranas is called as the Bhavishya Purana. Bhavishya means future. This Purana speaks about the future. And it's mentioned in Bhavishya Purana, Parva 3, Khan 3, Adhyay 3, Shlokas 5 to 8. A Malaysia will come along with his companions 
from the desert, and his name shall be Muhammad, peace be upon him. And Raja Bhoj will give this Mahadev Arab a bath in the Panchgarv and will welcome him with honor and address him with reverence and say, O oh, pride of humankind, you have created a great force to fight against the evil people. This prophecy of Bhavishya Purana Parva 3, Khanda 3, Adhyay 3, Shlokas 5 to 8, it says that a Malachya will come. Malachya in Sanskrit means a foreigner. He will come along with his companions talking about the Sahabas from a Marusthal. Marusthal in Sanskrit means a sandy track or a desert. His name shall be Muhammad, peace be upon him. Raja Bhoj will address this Mahadev Arab with reverence and say, O oh, pride of humankind, we know that Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam is a pride of humankind. As Allah says in the Quran, in Surah Kalam, chapter number 68, verse number 4, Verily thou art standeth on the highest standard of character. Allah says in Surah Ahzab, chapter number 33, verse number 21, Verily in the Prophet, Muhammad peace be upon him, you will find a very beautiful pattern of conduct. He further says that he will collect a great force to fight against the evil people. And we know that was done by Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. This prophecy refers to no one but Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him. Some people may say that the Raja Bhoj mentioned in this prophecy was present in the 11th century, 500 years after Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, and was the descendant of the 10th generation of Raja Shilavahan. These people, they failed to realize that like the monarchs of Egypt, they were given the title pharaohs. There were many pharaohs. There was not one pharaoh. Like the kings of Rome were called as Caesars. There was not one Caesar, there were many Caesars. Similarly, the kings of India were given the title Bhoj. So there was not one Raja Bhoj, there were many Raja Bhoj. So this Raja Bhoj is not the one they're talking about in the 11th century. It is much earlier before that 11th century. Further, it's mentioned in Bhavishya Purana, Parva 3, Khanda 3, Adhyay 3, Shlokas 10 to 27. The land of the Malachyas has been spoiled. There was an enemy who was killed earlier. Now he's been sent by a more powerful enemy. I will send a man by the name Muhammad, peace be upon him, to guide these people to the straight path. O oh, Raja Bhoj, you need not go to the land of the Pishachas. Because I, through my kindness, will purify you where you are. Then a man with an angelly disposition comes to Raja and tells him that Arya Dharma will prevail in this world. I have been sent by Ishwar Paramatma. My follower shall be circumcised, who doesn't have a tail on the head, who will grow a beard, who will create a revolution, who will give the call for prayer. He will eat all lawful things. He will eat all sorts of animals, but will not eat the flesh of swine. He will not be purified by herbs and shrubs, but will be purified by warfare. He will be called as Musalman. This prophecy refers to no one but the last and final messenger prophet Muhammad It says that my follower shall be a person who's circumcised. And we know the Muslims are circumcised. He will not have a tail on the head. That's a shindi or a chutti. He will grow a beard. He will create a revolution. He will give the call for prayer. That's talking about the Adhan, like you Muslims give. He will eat all lawful things. He will eat all sorts of animal, but will not eat the flesh of swine. And Allah says in the Quran in no less than four different places. In Surah Bakra, chapter number two, verse number 173. Surah Maida, chapter number five, verse number three. Surah Anam, chapter number six, verse number 145. And Surah Nahal, chapter number 16, verse number 115. Hurrimat alaykumul maitu tu waddamu walahmul khinzeer. Wama ahuilla ali gairilla bi. Forbrin for you for food are dead meat, blood, the flesh of swine, and any food on which any name besides Allah's name is taken. So because the Quran says in no less than four different places that flesh of swine is prohibited, we Muslims don't eat pork. The prophecy further says they will not be purified by herbs and shrubs, but will be purified by warfare. 
and they will be called as Musalman. This prophecy clearly indicates about the coming of the last and final messenger, Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. It's further mentioned in Bhavishya Purana, Parva 3, Khand 1, Adhyay 3, Shlokas 21 to 23. It says that the seven sacred cities of Kashi have been filled with corruption and rakshas. In the land of the Malicha, the followers of the Malicha Dharm are good people. All good qualities are found in them. And in this country, we find all sorts of vices. O Rishi, glorify the name of the Lord. Here too, it is talking about Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and his followers. Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam is also prophesied in the Vedas. He is prophesied in Atharva Ved, Book number 20, hymn number 127, mantra number 1 to 14. It is called as Kuntap Suktas. Kuntap means hidden gland in the abdomen. That means the meaning of these verses are hidden, and you'll come to know about it later on. Kuntap also means free from misery, also means peace, similar to Islam. It's also related to the center of the earth, and we know Makkah is the center of the earth. And Allah says in the Quran, in Surah Al-Imran, chapter 3, verse 96, that the first place of worship was Bakka, which is another name for Makkah. Time will not permit me to go through all the 14 mantras. I'll just briefly speak about the first four mantras. Atharva Ved, book number 20, hymn number 127, mantra number 1 says, He is Narashansa. He is Kaurama, who has been protected from 60,090 enemies. Mantra number two says, he is a camel riding Rishi. Mantra number three says, he is Mama Rishi. Mantra number four says, he is Vashivis Reb. The first mantra says, he is Narashansa. Nar in Sanskrit means a human being or a man. Shansa means Prashansa, praiseworthy. A man who is praiseworthy which is exactly the translation of the Arabic word Muhammad, which was the name of the last and final messenger Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. It further says, he is Kaurama. One of the meaning of Kaurama is a prince of peace. And a beloved prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam was a prince of peace. The other meaning is an immigrant. And we know prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, migrated from Makkah to Medina, and he was an immigrant. It further says, he will be protected from 60,090 enemies. And we know the population of Makkah that was against Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam was approximately 60,000. Mantra number two says, he will be a camel riding Rishi. No Indian Rishi or a Brahmin will ever ride a camel because riding a camel is prohibited for a Brahmin. It's mentioned in Manu Smriti, chapter number 11, verse number 202, that a Brahmin will not ride a camel or an ass. Therefore, it has to be a prophet who is a foreigner. Third mantra says, he is Mama Rishi or Maharishi. Mama, some verses say Muhammad, some say Great Rishi. Mantra number four says, he is Reb. Reb means one who praises, which is the meaning of the other name of Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. One who praises in Arabic is called as Ahmad which was the other name of Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam is also prophesied in Atharva Ved, book number 20, hymn number 21, mantra number 6. It says, it speaks about the Battle of Azab, the Battle of Ali's, and it says that he will be protected from 10,000 enemies, and he will win the battle without fighting it. He will be a Karu. Now, Karu in Sanskrit means a person who praises. In Arabic, it means Ahmad, which is another name for Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. It says he will win the battle without fighting it. Talking about the Battle of Azab, which was won without fighting it. And we know the approximate population, the enemies at that time, were 10,000. It further says in Atharva Ved, book number 20, hymn number 21, mantra number 7, that Almighty God will overthrow 20 kings and he will protect 
दिया बंधु फ्रॉम सिक्सटी थाउजेंड एंड नाइन्टी नाइन एनिमीज अबंधु इन संस्कृत मीन्स एन ऑर्फिन द अदर मीनिंग ऑफ अबंधु मीन्स प्रेज वर्दी विच इज द ट्रांसलेशन ऑफ मोहम्मद इन टू इंग्लिश पीस बी अपॉन हिम सो अबंधु इन संस्कृत इफ ट्रांसलेट टू अरबिक मीन्स मोहम्मद सल्लम इट सेज द राउंड माइंटी गॉड विल ओवर थ्रो ट्वेंटी किंग्स एंड वी नो दैट दे वो अप्रॉक्सिमेटली ट्वेंटी चीफ टिन्स in makkah at the time of muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam and muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam won all of them and the enemies against the prophet muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam at that time was approximately 60000 the same prophecy is also repeated in rigved book number 1 hymn number 53 mantra number 9 but the sanskrit word used is sushrama sushrama also means one who is praiseworthy which is the meaning of muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam and prophet muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam is also prophesied in agni mantra number 64 and it says that this rishi he will not drink the milk of his mother he will not be breastfed by his mother and we know prophet muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam was not breastfed by his own mother and bibi halima may allah be pleased with her she was the one who breastfed muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam is also prophesied as Ahmad, one who praises in several places. In Uttar Chik, mantra number one thousand five hundred. In Indra, chapter number two, mantra number one fifty two. In Yajur Ved, chapter number thirty one, verse number eighteen. In Rig Ved, book number eight, hymn number six, mantra number ten. In Atharva Ved, book number eight, hymn number five, mantra number sixteen. In Atharva Ved, book number twenty, hymn number one twenty-six, mantra number fourteen, Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam, besides being prophesied as Ahmad, is even prophesied in several places as Narashangsa. As I mentioned earlier, Narashangsa is derived from Nar, which means a human being or a man, and Shangsa comes from the word Prashangsa, which means praise. a man who is praiseworthy prophet muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam is prophesied by name as muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam as narashansa in several places in hindu scriptures in rigved book number 1 hymn number 13 mantra number 3 in rigved book number 1 hymn number 18 mantra number 9 in rigved book number 1 hymn number 106 mantra number 4 in rigved book number 1 hymn number 142 mantra number 3 in rigved book number 2 hymn number 3 mantra number 2 in rigved book number 5 hymn number 5 mantra number 2 in rigved book number 7 hymn number 2 mantra number 2 in rigved book number 10 hymn number 64 mantra number 3 rigved book number 10 hymn number 182 mantra number 2 yajurved chapter number 20 Verse number thirty-seven. Yajurve chapter number twenty. Verse number fifty-seven. Yajurve chapter number twenty-one. Verse number thirty-one. Yajurve chapter number twenty-one. Verse number fifty-five. Yajurve chapter number twenty-eight. Verse number two. Yajurve chapter number twenty-eight. Verse number nineteen. Yajurve chapter number twenty-eight. Verse number forty-two. You can go on only giving references of the Hindu scriptures where Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam is mentioned by name. Time does not permit us. We can give a lecture for a full day only on Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam Hindu scriptures. Due to limitation of time, I'll just mention one more prophecy about Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam Hindu scriptures. That is about Kalki Avatar. It's mentioned in Bhagavad Purana, Khand 12, Adhyay 2, Shlokas 18 to 20. It says that in the house of Vishnu Yas, the noble-souled Brahmin. the chief of the village of sambala will be born kalki he will be given superior qualities and will be given eight supernatural qualities he will ride a white horse and carry the sword in the right hand it's so the mention bhagavat purana khand 1 adhyay 3 mantra number 25 in kalyug when kings will be like robbers in kalyug when kings will be like robbers in the house of vishnu yas will be born kalki he is even prophesied in kalki purana chapter number 2 mantra number 4 it says 
that in the house of Vishnu Yas, the noble souled Brahmin, the chief of the village of Sambala, will be born Kalki. It's mentioned Kalki Purana, chapter number two, mantra number five. He will be helped by four companions to fight the evil people. It's mentioned Kalki Purana, chapter number two, mantra number seven. He'll be held by the devatas or the angels in the battlefield. It's mentioned in Kalki Purana, chapter number two, verse number 11. He'll be born in the house of Vishnu Yas in the womb of Sumati. It's mentioned Kalki Purana, chapter number two, verse number 15. He'll be born on the 12th day of the month of Madhav. In short, all these verses of the Hindu scriptures, they speak about the Kalki Avatar. I'll just mention in brief the few points which is prophesied in the scripture. Point number one, his father's name will be Vishnu Yas. Vishnu means God. Yas means the servant. It means the servant of God. If you translate into Arabic, it means Abdullah, which was the name of the father of Prophet Muhammad <laughs> The mother's name will be Sumati. Sumati in Sanskrit means serenity, calm, peace. In Arabic, it means Amina, which was the name of the mother of Prophet Muhammad <laughs> It says he will be born in the village of Sambhala. Sambhala means a place of serenity and peace. And we know Makkah was called as Darul Aman, means the house of peace. And Prophet Muhammad ﷺ was born in Makkah. It further says he'll be born in the house of the chief of the village of Sambhala. And we know Muhammad ﷺ was born in the house of the chief of Makkah. It further says he'll be born on the 12th day of the month of Madhav. And we know Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam was born on the 12th date of Rabbi Awal. It further says that he will be the last Rishi, the last prophet, the Antim Rishi. And we know it's mentioned in the Quran in Surah Azab, chapter 33, verse number 40. Ma kana Muhammadun aba ahdim mirjalakum walakhi Rasulullah wa khatam in nabiyin wa kana Allahu bi kulli shayin alima. Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam is not the father of any of you men, but he is the messenger of Allah and is the seal of the prophets. Allah is all-knowing and full of knowledge. So the Quran says that he will be the last messenger prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. It further says that this Rishi, this Kalki Avatar, he will get the knowledge, the enlightenment. The first one at night time in a cave. And then he will go towards north and come back. We know Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, the first Wahi, he got was at night time in Garahi in Jabal Nur. And the Quran says in Surah Dukhan, chapter 44, verse number 2 and 3, as well as Surah Qadr, chapter 97, verse number 1, which says, Inna anzalna fi laylatul Qadr. Verily, we have revealed the Quran in the night of power. And we know Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam migrated to Medina, which was in the north direction of Makkah, and then he came back to Makkah. It further says he will be given extremely good qualities. It further says he will be given eight supernatural qualities. The eight mentioned in the Hindu scriptures is wisdom, self-control, revealed knowledge, respected lineage, valor, measured speech, gratefulness, and utmost charity. All these eight qualities, alhamdulillah, are found in the last and final messenger, Prophet Muhammad It further says that he will be a messenger for the whole of humankind. As Allah says in Surah Sabah, chapter number 34, verse number 28, illa wa naziro. We have sent thee not but as a universal messenger, giving glad tidings and warning them against sin. But most of the human beings here do not know. It further says that he will be given a white horse. And we know Muhammad was given the burak by which he did the miraj. It also says that he will ride a horse carrying the sword in the right hand. And we know Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam even took part in the battle, most of which were in self-defense. He actively took part and even had the sword in the right hand. The prophecy further says he will guide the ignorant people to the straight path. And we know Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam guided the Arabs. Those days were called as Ayyamul Jahiliya, the days of ignorance. And Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, with the help of Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala, with the help of the Quran, he guided the Arabs from darkness to light. It further says he'll be helped by four companions, referring to the four sahabas, the Khulfa Rashidin, Hazrat Abu Bakr, 
Hazrat Umar, Hazrat Usman, and Hazrat Ali, may Allah be pleased with them all. And it says that he will be helped by the devtas, the angels in the battlefield. And we know the Quran mentions in Surah Al Imran, chapter number 3, verse number 123 to 125, as well as in Surah Anfal, chapter number 8, verse number 8 and 9, that the angels helped Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam in the Battle of Badr, and because of them, Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam was victorious. This was in brief talking about the Kalki Autar, which is mentioned in the Hindu scriptures. For more details on Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam in Hindu scriptures, you can refer to my video cassette on this topic, which gives more details on Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam in the Hindu scriptures. Let us discuss the prophecy of Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, in the Parsi scriptures.